Then we've got a, this is a kind of emergency uh, Zoom because uh, Jackie Walker's not able to make it um, from the home comforts that she's got. She's out and about in a festival. But I think it's important that we discuss uh, this issue of um, two tweets that have come up in the past week uh, that yeah. have made a lot of attention. They've had a lot of attention. I'm just going to show the first one uh, that I'd like you to talk about, uh, Jackie. It's, um, it's this one from Diane Abbott, uh, in which she says, uh, which is responding to um, 41 migrants die in shipwreck off Italy. Uh, and she's written, these migrants have indeed fucked off to the bottom of the sea. Uh, now, that that tweet got a response from um, Jonathan Pye saying, well done, Diane, for taking the heat off Lee Anderson, you stupid tit. Um, I, I was quite shocked that that would have that response. What's your reaction? To, to Diane Abbott's tweet and then its res response. Okay, so my response to Diane Abbott's tweet was that she should never have taken it off. Because actually what she's saying is the truth. Because that's what we as a society are saying to these people. You know, if, if you actually see the message that's going out and it's not just going out to those uh, refugees. It's going out very clearly to black people and it's going out to the rest of the population. I mean, they don't have to say it, do they? But it's really clear and it's really clear from what that awful Lee Anderson said that actually what they want is for them to fuck off and die in the sea, right? And then what do I make of Jonathan Pye? Well, you know, this is what you get from white liberals, isn't it? This is exactly what you get. Because in the end, what, what they don't understand is the meaning of solidarity. Because actually what she was doing is using the same kind of, shall we say, irony, which Pi uses himself to point out the hypocrisy of our so-called caring for race. But I, I want to say something else about this as well, because this is what weaponizing race gets you. What it gets you is actual victims of race and their representatives being silenced in favor of these people in the establishment. And that's where we are at now. So personally, I think she should have kept it up and I think she should have made it actually a focus for a campaign not just about the refugees but about the way that black people and other oppressed minorities are being silenced right uh, thank you for for that now the, the second tweet has been very divisive uh on the left I, I would say um this is uh David Miller's tweet um uh, it says the facts Jews are not discriminated against. Uh, sorry, what the facts one Jews are not discriminated against, two, they are overrepresented in Europe, North America, and Latin America in positions of cultural, economic, and political power, three, they are therefore in a position to discriminate against actually marginalized groups. Now, he put that tweet out. Um, the sort of usual people who would attack him did. But then we also had um, Michael Rosen saying, seems like David Miller has outed himself as an anti-Semite, which then prompted um, uh, the Jewish Voice for Labour to, to release a, a statement saying David Miller has crossed the line. Uh, we find what David Miller tweeted on August 7th unacceptable. And they say he presents these three bold statements as facts. They're overstatements at best, flattering, flattening and homogenizing Jews, ignoring any historical, international or social context and creating an impression of Jews exercising power as a cohesive force. Many were distressed by some of Miller's statements in the past, which seemed to exaggerate Israeli power, but we believe they fell within the terrain of academic freedom this recent tweet focusing on Jews is of a different order and has crossed the line. And, and then 
uh we've got owen jones coming into this saying um this is straightforward anti-semitism here is the problem with those who treated any accusation of anti-semitism as a witch hunt they ended up defending people like this blinding themselves to glaring the obvious red flags uh i i had thought of not commenting on this at all but i think um in the past you yourself were victim of of uh people um saying you were this and that and no one and you didn't really get a chance to speak out on it so i think it's interesting to hear what you think about um david miller's tweet and the response to it and the problem is i'd have to give you about half an hour 40 minutes to give you a really full um response to that first i don't take any notice about what owen jones says he's he's got no credibility on this he has been backing the witch hunt you know if he wants to point fingers he has been backing the witch hunt since the start he was cozying up with the worst offenders at the jlm you know party at one point so i'm, I'm not going to take any lessons from Owen Jones or comments from Owen Jones about this. So I'm ignoring that. In terms of what the JVL said and David's comment, my take on this is it was, you know, I'm, and I'm not talking about everything he's ever said, by the way, I'm talking about that tweet. I think it was a generalization, but then again, that's what sociologists do. You know, socio sociologists, which is what he is, talk about women. They talk about the working class. And when we talk like that, and it's a language, it's a vocabulary we need in terms of actually being able to express anything politically, there is a flattening and there is a generalization. But what you have to try to do after that is then be a bit more specific. And I think that's where it this went wrong now um are jews discriminated against well if you're talking as a sociologist they are you know there's not much evidence that jews are discriminated against in this in this country that doesn't mean that they haven't been at times discriminated against and it doesn't mean that they won't be again but in terms of looking at the sort of evidence there's not much that there is so I think that's how I sort of responded on that. His third point, which is that Jews can therefore become the oppressors. I kind of think in a way that that's nonsense. And I don't even, nonsense in that I don't even know what he's trying to express there. I mean, we can all become oppressors, can't we? You know, I can think of some black people who are in power at the moment. And I think of them as being pretty oppressive. So I think that's a sort of meaningless thing to have said anyway. And the second thing, what was it? They're not discriminated against their... So I've done the first and the third. What was the second They're overrepresented one? in overrepresented. Europe, North America and Latin America in positions of cultural, economic and political power. Yeah, well, you know, again, this is a tough one, isn't it? Because, you know... Black people are overrepresented in sport. Um, Asian people are overrepresented in being convincing solicitors. And we could go on like this. The problem there is it doesn't point to the material reasons why that has happened. And there are always material reasons. And if you slip into thinking it's just because Asians are Asians or black people are black, or Jews are Jews, why there is any disproportionate representation in any field. That's when you slip into uh, racism. And I think the problem here is that I found them sort of ill-written, a bit confused, etc. cetera. Um, and I think that is a problem when you're talking like this. And I think as an academic, he could have done better. Am I going to point a finger at him and shout anti C Mike? Well, I've had a discussion about this online. Because then what happens, you see, is that you get a pile on and they all go, come on, come on, why aren't you calling this person an anti C Mike? It's a very powerful thing.
thing to do. It's an overused thing to do. Um, I think I'd much prefer to do what I'm hoping to do next week when I meet David and go to be beautiful days and actually have a discussion with him. And I think actually that's what we should be doing. And pointing at somebody and screaming, you're a racist, does not help this situation. Because those people who are ill-informed and agree um, and go down that route of taking David's, uh, David's views to an anti-Semitic point of view, will just feel they're being shut down and shut up by the power that be. No, we've got to engage with this and we should be doing it in a public way. That's what I think. Yeah, I think that's that's why I kind of wanted to discuss it with you rather than doing kind of uh, however many characters Twitter is. You, you can't really, it's just pointless. So you have to get it off Twitter and actually talk about it. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the problem, isn't it? Yeah, and the problem is we now have a culture and it's not just about race. It's also about trans, you know, that uh, where we can't have a conversation about this. And this has got to stop. We've got to be able to be in dialogue with each other. And, we, and because that's the only way we actually learn anything. That's how you change minds. You don't do it by shouting, you know, anti-Semite or, you know, whatever you want to shout at, at people. You know, the way you don't go and change racism by screaming at people that they are racist. You do it through argument and showing that their, 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 their views and that their points of view don't have a logical foundation. And as long as we still keep doing this, and we're doing it on the left as well, it's not just the right, then we're in a we're, we're in a no through road on these things.